let's clear this off for right now. We're going to continue with some more on the 46 portion. The 46 substance uh, portion. Just let me clear this because this is really important for us to address. I mean, it's been on my mind for a couple of days now, brothers and sisters. Um, and once again, uh, Shalom. In a Rasia Dinos Tefarinen, Salam Tanat, Engna Yis Berlin. Salam Le Kulkumu, you know what I'm saying? Or Salam Le Hulachukum. In other words, peace be, may his shalom be with you all. We want to win 20, 20, um, 12. Now, if you haven't seen the signs, you either are blind to it, or you haven't been reading, or you haven't been paying attention, or you are um, brushing off all the signs that we're seeing in this time. You might not know how they all connect prophetically, you understand, but you should be aware, you understand, that these days, that Abba, Father, told us about these days, and this is one reason why we've made haste to... Um, to publish this particular document right here, the Sakari Yeses, right? This is the Amharic only version right here, and hopefully within the next um, um, couple of days, job willing, we'll be able to um, publish the English or raw translation of this. You understand as soon as as soon as possible. Yikrita and May, um, because when we when we um, got to work on this as we pointed to Revelation chapter 10. It was sweet to read it in, in the Amharic and even, you know, to understand what it's saying, to be able to interpret it. But then as it really set in that it, it, it's, these are the days, you understand? And this is what we want to deal with the contingency because we find that all the New World Order people, everybody is working on their contingency plan and many of us are left behind basically the old thing but Rastafari I and I as true and faithful Rastafari is never left behind because the Father has given us the Bible you understand and the King of Kings he speaks about that when man would seek you understand his hopes and his aspirations crumbling before him you understand he has to realize and recognize that the B-I-B-L-E is his refuge. Now that's a very interesting because if you're following and, and if you're studying Torah with I and I, you will recognize that that particular word, a refuge, comes up. A refuge. And we're, we're told to take refuge under his wings of protection. Over, so the King of Kings, our Abba, Kedus Abba Tachin, has already given us his word, you understand, and his instruction. You know, and he has given us his son, the son, Getachina Met Hanatachin Jesus Christos. And repentance to the brethren who, um, I and I brethren, Yaeko who acts about repentance, hopefully I and I will have an opportunity to um, reason with the I a little bit more and get some of your questions on that and see if I can sharpen I and if we can strengthen the I on that or if we have to pray together and ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate us in the name of Jesus Christos, the glory of Abba Kedus, Kedus Abatachin, Kedamawi, Haila Shalase, the Hashem, and so be it. We will do, but we want to reason on right here is a couple of pointers on um, contingency. The old saying contingency. I mean, we can. Wow, this is a very interesting. We give thanks for what the Holy Spirit has shown. I and I. This is why we're recording, you know, and posting um, so often. And we really want to post even more often. But before we post, you know, we're doing I and I study. We're doing I and I prayers. You know, we're chanting, we are um, reasoning and, and ministering and, and trying to coordinate other brothers and sisters, you understand, where they're at and give them good counsel, you understand. So 
we don't always have the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to, to seat up with a particular brother or sister as we would like to, you know what I'm saying, because even if we were seated up with ones and ones, we'd be so um, occupied, you know what I'm saying, with, because this, 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 this planting, it's like it says, uh, set traps, you understand, for the little foxes. Because our our vines they, they blossom and they and, and they're tender, you know what I'm saying. So we really have to um, um, minister, you know, saying, to those who are co-laboring with I and I in these Torah studies and who are growing and 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 gaining like like a babe, a babe as a baby begins to stand, as a baby begins to walk. You know, what I'm saying those are very precious times as any parent. You understand? No, those are very precious times. You understand that they're foundational, groundational. And here's what we want to do. First of all, we want to talk on 2012 within the amount of time that we have here. 2012 and I and I contingency. You understand? Because all of us, you understand, or many of us rather, might not be able to make it. You understand? Out of here. Speaking of the West. You know, since it's somewhere in Africa on, on on solid ground, on bedrock, to reach bedrock, you know, since before some of the um, prophesied and even anticipated um, signs, um, which will bring great and cataclysmic, it's, it's gonna this 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 system of things that we're in, you know, since. Is coming to an end. So if we wonder, well, why all the money? Like you look at all the money that seems trillions of dollars just seem to disappear. You might like be like, what's up with that? Because they are building infrastructures for themselves and for their people and for their own continuity of government. Well, the same thing is important to I and I. You understand, and thus the line of Judah society and the conquering line of the tribe of Judah mission. You understand, to build a contingency. We are part of that contingency of His Imperial Majesty's government. That's why when they say, well, His Imperial Majesty's, um, there was a revolution or something or a creeping coup and, and great transgression against the King of Kings, and it's over. No. It's, it's gone to a whole different level, Daniel's, Donnell's prophecy. That this kingdom will not be removed. It's not going to be given. It has not been given over to another people. But it is, a, it is under a, a change of management. Let's call the, um, let's call, um, the, the, the kingdom of the king of kings has gone through a change of management. You understand? And we as Aras the Fari, you know, saying we are our ears of that, but we have to grow up. You know, saying we have to learn of our divine heritage. We have to learn of our ancient Ethiopian culture. You know, saying because there is a, a there is a, a high and a heavenly, but also a heavy responsibility on we. But John knows that we are children. John knows that our education, our awareness, our, our background hasn't prepared us. You understand for the varied duties and responsibilities. So he has given us his son. He has given us Yeshua HaMoshiach. He has given us Jesus Christos in spirit and in truth. You understand in spirit and in truth. You understand and he's one of us. You understand, but that's not the only point that's important about Yeshua HaMoshiach that he's black. You understand that's actually the least of it for us or should be. For us, it's really now receiving his instruction, his word, you understand, know his spirit, receiving that vision, you understand, know and making our wills obedient to his good influence. You understand, know because we have to recognize that I and I is saved by his grace through faith, you understand, know through faith in his number one son, in Jesus Christos Yeshua Ha Moshiach. All right, my brothers and sisters. So now let's touch on this 2012. Now the Bible says that we have to redeem, right? We have to redeem the time, right? Because the days are evil. Have you read that before? Have you heard that? You know what I'm saying? We have to redeem the time. 
You know, so that means we have to use our time with his redemption. You understand? Know with the redemption in mind. So that means we have to recognize that we are, all right, that we are redeemed. You understand? Know because if we don't recognize that we are redeemed, then how can we really redeem the time? You understand? Know so we have to receive those 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 basic those basic building blocks. And this is one of my roles and responsibilities in, in these teachings. And sometimes being long winded in these teachings and trying to go into cover all or most of the foundational detail and hoping and praying that the Holy Spirit guides you as well to study it. Study it individually, study it in study groups. You understand? Because building that spree the core, you understand? The spree the core is the spirit of the body. You understand? Christ, Yeshua, the King of Kings, He is the head. You understand? And we are that body. And prophecy says that all things will be brought under the feet of Christ. Every enemy, and the last enemy is death, is moat, and death itself. Because death is swallowed up in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. That's the word right there. So let's touch on this um, redeeming the time now, right? The, the, the verse from um, the Bible, redeeming the time, I think it's, uh, I think it's Timothy. It's, it's, it's in Timothy where it speaks about redeeming the time. We have to redeem the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. How do we redeem the time? You know what I'm saying? How do we make the best, right? How do we make the best out of this time that we have? And we don't know how much time we have. See, that's the whole thing, brothers and sisters. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? We don't know how much time we have. We don't know whether it's going to, you know, we might not get to put this video up, you know what I'm saying, before it happens or before, as they say, all hell breaks loose. And some folks have scoffed at, you know, um, the true spirituality, you know what I'm saying, and they have scoffed at even what they call um, the supernatural, you know what I'm saying, but know this, that all hell, you know, saying all hell will break loose. You know, saying on this earth that all hell is about to break loose on this earth. Now, to, to, to get into actually it was Ephesians, to get into all the details of it right now. This is why we're looking forward to perhaps doing a radio show and some of the brothers and the sisters them if we can, you know, arrange it or within His Spirit. You know, saying we can have a call conferencing or certain call conferencing, but ones have to kind of man those positions. Say, yo, brother, I got this reserved phone number right now. Anytime, yo, know, we're saying you need me, give me a call, send me a text, hit me up on Facebook or whatever like that, and we can do this. Those who might have certain radio shows or other sort of broadcasts who might want I and I, you know, to, to come on the ear or be on hand to answer certain questions while I and I um, is able to, you understand, and of the sound mind, then so be it. Um, now, redeeming the time, Ephesians 5 and 16. Now, this is very interesting. I was saying Timothy, my bad. You understand? But I was saying Timothy, but it's actually Ephesians 5 and 6. Right? And Ephesians 5 and 6. I mean, 5 and I think 6, uh, 16. It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, chapter 5, it says, the walk of the believer, the mitmanon. You remember in this, in the previous portion, we spoke about um, the mitmina, right, and the rastafari of food, and the prerequisite is keeping the sendat, the Sabbath, the Shabbat is a foundation, it's a groundation. Um, so here, speaking about the walk, the walk, the akahed, not just walking around, you understand, know but it's it, it's our um. It's our walk in the sense of our our behavior, you know, and how we conduct, you know, saying, ourselves as a Rastafari, as John's own 
Dear Lynch. You know what I'm saying? How we conduct ourselves as John's on Dear Lynch or for the sisters, Legit. You know what I'm saying? Legit for the sisters. All right? And um, here's what it says right here, right? Here's what it says right here. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God. You know what I'm saying? And so, Aynas Rastafari, we say that Kedamawi Haila Shalase, that is Imperial Majesty, is the is the Hashem. You understand? We say that the King of Kings is the Hashem, right? And since He is the Hashem, He is I and I God and King of Kings. So therefore, it's His example that should become a guide for us. You understand? In spirit, you understand? In soul, and even in body. You understand? And we're not talking about the outer level. We're talking about the inner level, the spirituality of his imperial majesty. So when we say, um, be ye um, be ye followers, right? His majesty says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. And you just need to read the We in Ethiopia speech. The overstand is contained in many of our publications, but it's on the internet and many other books. You understand? But you need to find a time and opportunity to commit that to even your memory. Read it, study it, you understand? Um, or, or hear it, you know, saying hear it, record yourself saying it, you know, saying put it to music, you know, saying in other words, you must hear the word, you must read the word, you must study the word, you must memorize the word, and then truly you can meditate the word, you know, saying truly, and that that hand, that five fingers leading to the hand, that's that fist, which is Yah, or the right hand of. God that we call Bamarinya the Ij and in Ethiopic the Id, right? But here it says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love. We're to conduct I and ourselves in love as Christos, as Moshiach, or the anointed, also have loved us and have given himself. He has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. For a sweet-smelling... Are you following this, my brothers and sisters? For a sweet-smelling savior. You understand? Um, normally we would say in our... You know, when we're teaching, we used to be teaching, um, grab your pen and your paper and, and, you know, and bring your sacred scripture and a ready an attentive and a willing mind to receive the half of the story, you know what I'm saying, that hasn't been told until now. You know what I'm saying, to, as, as a call to, these are times to study. You can watch it, maybe you're listening to it, so forth and so on, but get a copy of it, share it with other brothers and sisters. Notice that verse right there in verse 5, because this is speaking, this, this, this vid, and no doubt we're going to have to do a couple more vids, Maybe in a, in a couple of different formats, you know, saying, so we can really paint the picture, you know, saying, or fully articulate and describe what we're saying right now. We're in these last days of a, a, a system that, for the most part, humanity knows nothing else than this particular Babylonian system. You know, saying, and, and, and true being, you know, although ones may not love it, you understand, know, definitely. Um, ones are used to it and, and, and to think that just one day, all of a sudden, everything that we think we know, you understand, know, everything that we, we have become familiar with, almost like just when we have started to learn the game and become a player in the game, the game is over. You understand, know, we're talking about this system of things, you know, this is connected with Nibiru, yes, it's connected with Planet X. You understand, know or we can call it um, 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 the destroyer. You understand, know we can call it some say Elanine um, in the Ethiopic, uh, um, um, Cementennial She Kokep, or the star of the eighth millennium, according to the Aude. I think it's the Aude, Aude Negist, uh, Aude Negist. I believe that's the book, The Orbit of the Kings. You know, so this is this is very much testified. The Mayan spoke of it, the Aztec spoke of it, um, even Webbot 
you know what I'm saying, has spoken of the I Ching also speaks of it. Our Ethiopian documents, in fact, um, the the document that we're talking about right here, Fikare Iesus, also speaks of Nibiru. This is why when we um, broadcast the previous um, 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 vid on Fikari Yesus, you know, we said that it was just like Revelation chapter um, 10, where it says that, and when we, you know, got this book, it was sweet to the mouth, but it's bitter to the belly because it's talking about the reality of this time. So even the Fikari Yesus, all right, the Fikari Yesus, which was published in the 43rd year of his Imperial Majesty's reign, roughly 73, 72, 73 or so, speaks of what we call Nibiru, you know what I'm saying, speaks of this planet, you know what I'm saying, and it speaks of this cataclysmic time, right, this cataclysmic time that we are, we are that generation, you know what I'm saying, and many of us will be alive at that time. But we have to prepare. We have to get our spiritual house in order. We have to pray. We have to learn how to pray. We have to learn what faith is and who is the faithful one to have faith in. You know, we have to learn those basics, the basic foundation. As Christ says, he who hears what he who hears, right, these sayings of mine and do with them, he will liken to a wise man. So when the rain fall and the winds blow and the torrent, the torrents come and all that beats against your know, I and I spiritual house. You see, every day we get rain, we get storms, we get these things beating, and some of us are beat down. You know, saying many of I and I sometimes we have to minister to a brother or a sister. Um, sometimes hours at a time. You understand? Know, um, in order to um, 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 encourage them in the faith or to lay out what the true faith of the King of Kings and his Christ is. And hallelujah, you understand, for the most part, those who Jah has given I and I, none of them I and I have lost. Um, there have been some who, who, who were gone too long, you understand, some who go their own way and and, and then they really get burnt out, and then they return and say, Ross, you was correct about that. Hear what I went through and this, and, and you was right. And sometimes we don't want to hear that I and I was right about something, and that the person had to experience what they experienced. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not about ego. you got to leave the ego, so-called, at the gate, at the door. You understand? Know Anyone who comes to follow me or follow after Yeshua HaMoshiach. What does he say? He says they must deny themselves. They must pick up their cross and follow him. That means we have to learn of him. You understand? And I hope and pray that y'all have already begun. And if this is new to you, you understand? If you're feeling this word and recognizing, then start today to learn of him. You understand? And learn of the true faith according to the gospel of his majesty, according to the teaching of his imperial majesty. Nagusa Neges, Kadamawi, Haila Shalase, Haila Salase the first. I and I, Godfather and King of Kings. All right? So, in this portion, we just want to get this book here because we want to show you this and we want to get this kind of ready as well. Um, oh, Kedusa Batoi, yes, Sitra Patu Geta, Yehin It, Be Jesus Christos, Be Geta Chin Sin, Barke Sitan. In other words, I'm, I'm just uh, um, giving the Baruch, you know, saying the blessing, really the authorization, you know, saying over this herb in this context right here, because it says, Be ye followers, right? Be ye therefore followers of. God as dear children, and what this says, and walk in love as Christ, as the anointed also have loved us. He's loved I and I, and have given himself, right? He has given himself for us an offering. He has given himself for us an offering, right? He's given himself for us an offering. 
and he's overcome moat. He's overcome death. Remember Golgotha? He's given himself for us an offering, right? An offering and a sacrifice to God, to Egziyavihir, to the sustainer, to Ha Elohim, Buruku, for a sweet smelling savor. A sweet smelling savor. And see, my brother and sister, that's the Kana, that's the Kana. That's the Kana Besim, Kana Bosom, right? That's the Kana Bosom, that's that tree, right? That tree of life. When we first read of it in 322, the mystery of the skull and bone, 322. Read Genesis chapter 3, verse 22, all right? Some folks might not understand why does it say walk in love as the Messiah or the anointed, even Christ in his kingly character, right? Also have loved us. His majesty loves us. Christ in his kingly character loves us. Yeshua loves us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. One sacrifice for all time. So there's no other kind of like, like animal sacrifices, no debtors. All right, no debtors, please. Right, there's the sac, the living sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Mm -hmm. For a sweet-smelling savor, and that's the kana bosom. That's the, that for the mature. See, for those who are not mature in the faith, you understand. First, they must receive. You know what I'm saying? The bread and the wine. But the bread and the wine is still, you know what I'm saying, the symbols of blessing, of buruk, right? Of buruk. But it says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh Kedusan. So it says, like, fornicating, right? Uncleanness. What John says is unclean. Covetousness. Wanting something that, you know, or, or someone, you know, like coveting after, you know, a brethren's sister, or coveting after a sister's brother, in that sense, or coveting after what they possess. Oh, they got that. I should have really got that. That really should have been mine. Let it not. Let it not. Don't allow it, right, to be once named amongst you. Not even that's this. this this is the second time somebody's naming that, but don't let it be once named amongst you as becometh saints, it says in the King James, that's Kedusan. Kedusan is the Holy Ones. Nazarite vow number six can give you a good groundation, but the, the word holy, Kedus, means to be set aside as the Shabbat day is set aside. So those who in true faith keep the Shabbat day um, um, holy or Caduce are also Caduce even as he is Caduce. He is Abba Caduce. Mm -hmm. Then it says, neither filthiness, neither, it says, neither filthiness, right? Neither filthiness, right? Nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, jesting or joking, which are not convenient. It doesn't mean that we're not to have a sense of humor, but it's some kind of jesting and joking, which is not proper, in other words. It's not proper for us who are truly caduce, who are his children, who are his representatives, all right? But rather the giving of thanks, but rather miskana, miskana. Miskana is thanks and praise in them heart, giving of thanks and praise. For this ye know, that no whore monger, no whole monger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idler, an idolater, in other words, someone who's covetous, someone who wants that which they don't have any right to possess, or, or, or they eye other people's things and talk about how they should really have these things or so forth and so on, but it wasn't given to them. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's covetous, but is an idolater, right? Have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. They don't have an inheritance. They don't have any divine heritage, 
right, in the kingdom of the anointed and of God and of his father and of Abba Kedus. Mm hmm That's interesting because some say, well, we are, they say, well, Hala Selassie, you say Hala Selassie is God, you are idolater. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says right here that anyone who's a whole monger running after whores, you know what I'm saying, and not bringing whores to the straight and narrow path as upright sister again, you know what I'm saying, in Christ and through the teaching of Christ and that grace of Christ, the true gospel of Christ, but is running after them to continue and whore them, you know what I'm saying, or an unclean person, right? And now you have to study the, what Josh says unclean is in the Word. You know what I'm saying? This is why one has to study and show themselves approved. These, this is all part of the first prerequisite of, of, of preparedness, of preparing for 2012 and beyond. Because not just 2012, because some of that is a false date. There are alignments, yes, but some of the other additional height is a false date. Check out the menorah that we put on in, in the menorah. Look at, look at our videos on menorah. If you look through the video, you'll see a candelabrum and, or, or the candle stand, or the lamp stand, rather, the lamp stand, and you'll see, I think it's nine, the nine branch one, and it speaks about from, I think, 2011 going to, like, 2018, 2019. We actually look at it from 2012 to 2020, and saying 2012 to 2020. But if you break that down, roughly a little less than half, it's really 2014 to 2015. That's very significant for I and I. You know what I'm saying? Which some are saying that that's the time that we should be. You know what I'm saying? On terra firma. You know what I'm saying? And terra firma for I and I is the promised land or Africa might not be Ethiopia proper, but in Africa. It's very important. But some of us might not be there all the time, so some things can happen with Nibiru or whatever before that time. So we have to set contingencies here. This is when we speak about society houses, establishing um, churches and yeshivas, yosen and, and study groups, and even the, the, the kibbutz and, and the farm, you understand, and other other sort of establishments, you understand, because all of this has come from the scriptures. So we we show that this is not anything new, you understand, as far as it as as far as we're making up something, you understand. But we're building on that foundation. We're turning to the Bible in this time, because we see, you know, our hopes and aspirations from a worldly perspective crumbling. You understand. So we have to get to higher ground, to terra firma, to more firm, firm. Groundation. I have to build our house on that rock. All right. So it goes on to say, "Let no man deceive you with vain words, with empty words." You saying with empty words. Don't let no one deceive you. You understand? Some think that what we're saying is empty words. Well, check it out for yourself. You understand? Is what we're saying? What we're saying is what the King of Kings is saying. Are those empty words? You know, some some ignore this. Say, oh, that's religion or whatever. You know, I, I don't know the Bible. No, you don't, because if you did, you would not be making those novice errors. You understand? Know and not just for yourself, but what about for the younger brothers and sisters? You understand? Know those who are coming into this. You understand? Know um, it's a movement. You understand? Know it must keep moving. You understand? Know In John's way. But you have to know what the way is, otherwise you go astray. Now it says, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath. That's what we're talking about in this time, in this particular um, time that we're entering into. That Some say we're already in that time, 2012 time. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things, vain words, right, cometh the wrath of Jah. Rastafari upon the children of what? Disobedience. That's what we posted within the Torah portion um, 46. In the 46 Torah portion, we actually touched on obedience. You understand? And the Shema. We talk about Shema Yisrael. Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Ahad. We say Besema'ab. Where weld, where men seduce, a hadu, a hadu amlak. That's the Shema. 
You'll send the Shema, hear, O Israel. You'll send hear, and hear means to hear it, yes, to, to feel it, and to obey it so we can make our wills obedient to good influences. You'll send, and avoid evil. That's showing the greatest wisdom according to the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. In fact, there's some say, oh, too much just teaching on the Bible and this and that. No, it's too little. You understand? And maybe one's not picking up on it. You understand? Because their ears are dull of hearing. You understand? For, for hearing the word, they listen to all other gossip and chatter and other stuff that just wears you down. All this negative talk. What happened to words, sound, and power? Don't we recognize that words shape reality? You understand? If we choose his words, then we are in that living reality, that we are overcomers and we won't be overcome. But as soon as we go away from his words to other worldly things and regard them as being more important than his word, you'll think that's the vain things. And that's why the wrath of Jah is coming upon the children of disobedience, or the children of Cain, you can call them. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. In some of the um, ministry operations, you know, of those who are co-partnering and fellowshipping with I and I, this is the basic foundation right here. Because if you really study this and pray on this, and and then commit this to your heart and, and your mind, and your memory, you know, saying, then when you're actually in situations that will help you discern, you understand, know, to pray for wisdom and that discernment. That's the key. You know, him because we're here, but the I of them is there. You know what I'm saying? And different ones are elsewhere. You know what I'm saying? For all, all of us to say, well, we're all going to come together at one spot. You understand? Know Unless that's in Zion, in the promised land, and on terra firma. You know what I'm saying? That is vain. That, that is vain. You know what I'm saying? What we have to do is really network and see, well, who's in our environment? If no one is in that environment, don't, don't. Don't become um, 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 overcome by that. You know, don't become depressed by that. But recognize that that means Jah is seeking to build the eye up so you will be ready when you come across your spiritual brothers and sisters who have been doing the same thing in true faith and by His good grace and His good graces. Right? That's where the gifts come from, those graces that He gives to us. Because it says in verse 8, for ye were sometimes darkness. In other words, we all were at some time ignorant. We didn't know what we know. What we know now is a time that we didn't know these things. So we all were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light. We are the true illuminati. We are the true illuminated ones, right? In the Lord, in Adonai, in Adoni, right? In Gita. You understand? We are that light, so we are to walk. Akahe, our halaka, our walk, our conversation. You understand? How we carry our and ourselves should be as children of the light, you know, of the Father of lights. Right? Verse 9 it says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, is in all goodness, all charitableness, you understand? And righteousness and truth. And truth, proving, not guessing, not assuming, not speculating, you know what I'm saying, but proving what is acceptable to Adonai, was acceptable to Gita, was acceptable to the Lord, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? Verse 11 it says, and have no fellowship. It says, no fellowship. Now, let's understand this fellow, when we say one is our fellow, it's one who's worthy to be called Wendem. When one is our fellow, it's one who's worthy to be called Ihit or Ihit, right? Our Ihit, you know, one who's worthy to be called our Inat or, or Imma or an Immabait, you know, mother of a house. Because that's what Christ teaches. You know, saying we're hearing his sayings. You know, saying who is my brother and mother and sister is one who does the will, right, does the will of my Father. What does our Father say? To make our wills obedient to good influences. So we see that full cipher right there. 
So when we get that right there and that overstanding, we have to like put it in the bank, put it in the treasury within. You know what I'm saying? We have to store this up within the I and I. You know what I'm saying? So that in time to come, we can get interest. We can accrue interest through the Holy Spirit. And as the Almighty, as we treasure His Word, His Word is the real currency. That's the real wealth, His Word. You know what I'm saying? And gaining that understanding to act on it. You understand? To act on it, to do His will. So when we talk about fellowship, it doesn't mean that we won't know men and people. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't mean we fellow with them. You understand? Know We're not in fellowship. Yo, know, it's like if I and I is a businessman as well, and we have to deal with many different outsources, right, and, and other ones who are not I and I Rastafari or I and I Ethiopian Hebrew or even Christian um, ones and ones, true mitmanon, true believers, you understand? We still are able to conduct business, but it's business, so you have to understand there's a difference. So when we learn what fellowship is, it should be easy to distinguish Yovazan between what it means about having no fellowship. They are not our fellows. We can preach to them, we can even teach to them, but they are not I and I brethren because they're black, or they're not our brethren because they have dreadlocks, or they eat ita, or they smoke herb, or something like that, listen to reggae music. Yovazan. Because, see, the price that the son paid is more valuable than those. Um, than those things. Those things are accessories, if anything, you understand, but are not the foundational things. So have no fellowship with the unfruitful, the unfruitful works of darkness, with the works of ignorance, right? But rather reprove them, rather reprove those things or expose those things. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Now you have to recognize that it's speaking of a certain type, you understand, a, a certain character type in this particular Ephesians chapter 5. It says, but all things that are reproved, in other words exposed, are made manifest by the light, by the illumination, right? For whatsoever doth make light, well, excuse me, whatsoever doth make manifest, whatsoever brings something into manifestation or into exposure, in other words, like, is light. You understand? Whatever bring, makes something manifest is light. So we understand that on the physical level, but do we comprehend what it means on the spiritual level? Wherefore he saith, awake, awake, in other words, wake up, brothers and sisters, wake up. Thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Hamushiach, or Christ, the anointed one, Christ in his kingly character shall give thee light. If we wake up, the King of Kings is giving us and has given us light. He has given us illumination. He has given us the Bible. He has given us Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos. Right? He has given us light. Right? See then that ye walk circumspectly, circumspectly, not as fools, not to walk as fools, but as wise, right? Now, verse 16, where we're at right now, speaking about 2012, our contingency plans, preparing, you know what I'm saying? Preparing, we must prepare I and I ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And we all might not be in the same sort of group, you know what I'm saying? Or we might not have a team. Some of us might be able to form a team, start a unit or a band, you know what I'm saying? Or a yeshiva or a Bible study, you know what I'm saying? Or even a nunnery or a sisterhood, you know what I'm saying? Or a monastic order, you know what I'm saying? That's on a churchical level, or a farm, or a kibbutz, you know what I'm saying? We might not be able to start this or that, or maybe any of them, or even be initially fellowshipping with them, but the basic foundation is knowing this word. Because then your discernment, then your awareness, your sense, then your ability to understand things spiritually. You know, in other words, be on the higher Ethernet. You know what I'm saying? On the higher network. When a lot of these other networks will go down. You know what I'm saying? And you already know, I think we already kind of recognize it could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. And the question that we keep asking is 
are we prepared or how prepared are we? And we look at how unprepared we are. This is why we're doing this particular message, my brothers and sisters, right? Because verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 5, it says, Redeeming, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, because of this, be ye not unwise. Do not be unwise. Remember, as Matthew says, um, um, concerning uh, uh, spiritual power, you understand? Spiritual power. As Matthew says this right here. Let's let's just read this for a moment concerning concerning um, what Matthew says concerning uh, when he speaks on religion, or what's known as the religion speech, and we're taking it from this particular booklet right here, or book one, right, and right here he says, to make our wills obedient to good influences, right, and to avoid evil, and to do what? Avoid. So evil, dead, dead, you understand, but we are to avoid it, right, so that means we have to have spiritual discernment to see it, even before we get all caught up on it. You understand, to avoid it, like something in traffic, we see it coming up, or we see that that road right there, the traffic ain't moving, so we take another road to get around it, to avoid it, is to show the greatest wisdom. So we have to pray for wisdom. This is why when we spoke in the previous portion about um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, you understand, I think it was verse 6, where it says, this is our wisdom in the sight of the nation. This is our wisdom. All right, so to make our wills obedient, obedient, right, to make them listen, in other words, uh, in agreement to good influences and to avoid evil to show the greatest wisdom. In order to follow this aim, one must be guided. And I have to be guided. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch when Philip overtook the chariot and ran up to him and said, and heard him reading um, Isaiah? You understand, which was concerning. He was he led as a as as a lamb to the slaughter. You understand, um, and P, uh, Philip Philippos asked um, the Ethiopian um, Hebrew eunuch. He said, "My friend, do you understand what thou readest?" Remember, this was the high holy season. You understand, so this is what also proves that the Ethiopian eunuch was a Hebrew, was a Beta Israel. What was his response? He said, oh, yeah, no, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. No, he says, how can I unless some man should guide me? So even that spirit of being willing to be guided, because you have many who don't know and maybe want to learn, but they are unteachable. And sometimes many of us have been unteachable. And so we really have to look at, when, we, when we're reading the Word, we've got to look at our and ourselves. You understand? I mean, all the different characters that we come across, we have to clear ourselves, we have to check ourselves. And if we come across something where we can see, okay, there's a negative aspect in the character, and I see this negative aspect in myself, this is what we pray on, this is what we ask for the strength on, this is what we ask for, like, a deliverance on this, to get that spiritual strength or wisdom to overcome that, or even ask the Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ to take this, take this from me, take this, because so, there are some things on the on the spiritual, etherical, psychical level, that's really beyond us. This is this is when we speak about spirituality now, at, at, at the rock bottom. You understand? Know Don't get confused by the word religion. It says in order to follow this aim, one must be guided by religion. Now, if you don't know what we mean by religion, you need to check out some of the previous videos on Hymenot and on the true faith and on the Tawahido. We touch on the word religion, breaking it down to its very root. And as we just summarize right here, our main be Christ's name, Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Right now, progress without religion or Hymenot, you understand, which is the, the true faith or the living faith, our definition in Ethiopic of religion means living faith. So when we come from our own root, you understand, our ancient Ethiopian culture, our divine heritage, we don't get confused like, like ones who are coming from a Gentile, white, Western 
mistranslation, vain words perspective. Because they hear religion and they think of religio. But we're not, we're not Latin. We're coming from our Ethiopic roots. So we understand that that's what it means in English, but we're coming from a, a, a higher authority as black Hebrew, black Hebrew national, right? Hebrew national. You like that? I and I, yeah, we could do something with that. Um, progress without living faith, or quote, religion, end quote, is just like a life surrounded by unknown perils and can be compared to a body, right, without a soul. So there's many of us as bodies and ones and ones. You check on the Facebook, you can check on even on Ethiopian um, World Net on the YouTube. And, and there's a lot of different ones and ones out there. You know what I'm saying? So we're a body, but, but wh wh where's that soul? You know what I'm saying? That soul, that, 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 that that is the, the, the unity, you know, saying that the real unity, you know, saying what with the spirit, the core, what is the spirit of the body, you know, saying, and for almost 40 years, we see something um, very strange happens where it's like the Rastafari movement kind of has gone astray, you understand? Not everybody, we're not talking about this mansion, that mansion, we're saying that under intense pressure from Babylon at a higher spiritual warfare, many of us have not been prepared, you know, saying, not just to confront, but to overcome. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we're almost playing defense, in a sense, instead of taking the so called offense, you know, saying, in his way, based on our faith to do the things that we need to do. So that's why it says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding, overstanding, in other words, what the will of Adonai is. What is the will of Adonai? What is the will of the Son?